Okay, let's go back to the periodic table and look at group one elements. Um, now these are all the elements found in the first column on the periodic table because that's called group one. Um, now they are all there because they have similar properties, uh, and that's why Mendeleev, the person who put the periodic table together, uh, put them all in one column. So you've got lithium at the top. Uh, then you've got sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Okay. Now the first thing is you may be asked a question, why are all of these elements stored in oil? Um, and the reason is because they are so reactive that uh, they need to be kept away from air and water um, because then they will react. Now I'm sure you've seen this demonstration or well, for some of it anyway, um, in your classrooms with the big glass trough um, where the different metals are dropped into water. Okay, now we only do it with water because of how reactive they are. And also in school we only do lithium, sodium and potassium. And when we get to potassium, uh, we can't go any further because potassium's the most aggressive that we can show you. Um, now, if you have done this in school, um, sometimes the teachers will put universal indicator into the water um, as well to show you uh, what happens because group one are called the alkali metals, okay? Because what happens is uh, they uh, react with the water to form an alkaline solution. So if you put a universal indicator into the water, it starts off green because that's neutral. And then as you add the, uh, the metal to the water, it will turn the water or the solution uh, purple. Because uh, universal indicator, when it goes above 7 and it goes up to about 14, then you're showing an alkaline. Now, if you, if you actually want to watch a little video of this, just go onto YouTube and just type in Group 1 Metals Reacting with Water. There's loads of videos to watch. Um, but um, you, if you do watch them, you'll see that lithium is the slowest reactor. Lithium is right at the top of the group, okay? Uh, and it reacts very gently with the water. And it'll just fizz around a little bit and then it'll just disappear. Um, sodium, that one reacts m a bit more aggressively and as um, the particles on the outside of sodium react with the water it actually um, makes the metal uh, spin into a kind of ball because it's reacting so quickly it forms a near enough perfect sphere and then the last one, potassium that you may have done actually sets on fire on top of the uh, water because it's so aggressive and it actually burns with a lilac flame. Now we can't do rubidium and we can't do cesium in school because they are such violent reactions and they would basically, they could well um, break that bowl right into lots of pieces. It's very dangerous. So, you may be asked to talk about um, the alkali metals and what they um, actually form. Okay, so the metal, when it's added to the water, forms a metal hydroxide um, and hydrogen gas. Now, if you remember, you may be asked, how do you test for hydrogen gas? Now, hydrogen gas is that one that's really light, uh, it's not very dense at all, and it will float off into the air, so you have to catch it in a tube. And if you do catch it, then you light a splint, pull it into the tube and it will make a squeaky pop um, because it's so explosive. Okay, so if we have a look then at some word equations and some symbol equations for group 1 reactions. Now let's just have a look. All that's happening here is you'll see you've got your three metals we've talked about so far that we can do in school. Lithium, sodium, potassium. You could quite easily change those and put in rubidium or cesium or francium into uh, into there but you'll see they all react with water and that's what happens in the glass trough so if you actually have a look the first thing you'll notice is that they all make hydrogen okay every single time you mix uh, the group one metal with water you will make hydrogen gas okay 
Now the other thing you may notice is that they all make a hydroxide. Well if you think about it, you've just put lithium into a bowl with hydrogen and oxygen because that's what water is. Well that's got to come out somewhere and that's why your hydrogen separates off uh, on its own and then you end up with lithium hydroxide because that is where the oxygens and hydrogens are joined onto the lithium. If you look at a balanced symbol equation, if you're not sure about balancing equations then there's a very simple rule you'll see. Can you see every single one of these has got a number 2 in front of it um, apart from hydrogen? So that might be a simple rule if you're not sure about um, balancing. So you may be asked to talk about what are the properties, what are the trends behind group 1. Now the first thing to remember is as you go down group 1 the melting points and the boiling points decrease. So the further down the group you go the more reactive the uh, chemicals are. So at the top lithium is the least reactive then sodium then potassium okay and then just remember we can't do the bottom three in school because they are so reactive so why are these particular metals so reactive well it's because they've got this one electron in its outer shell and they hate that they hate it because they just want to be nice and stable and have eight electrons now if you think about it the outermost electron is furthest away from the influence of the nucleus so it makes it easier for it to be removed as well uh, there is also something called the shielding effect as there are more negative electrons between the outermost electron and the nucleus which repel the electron away. It's all very sad. They're sending it away. Okay, the last part of this, actually there's something else I just want to mention, um, is if you were asked to talk about the formation of an ion. Now if you remember I said earlier, an ion is formed through um, electrons either being added or taken away. Well in this case you can see with lithium uh, we're taking away an electron and that means it's Li positive. And all that means is there are more positive protons than there are electrons uh, which usually, usually stabilise it. Um, sodium, take away an electron, it becomes Na plus because it's more positive. Uh, potassium, take away an electron, becomes K+. Plus. Now the other thing to remember is if you were looking at flame tests, you may be asked um, to ask how you would carry out a flame test, because that is for group 1 elements. First of all, um, you would um, get some acid and a wire loop and you would dip the wire loop into the acid to clean it off of any chemicals. Then you would dip your wire loop into um, one of the three chemicals that you would do, either lithium, sodium or potassium. So let's start off with lithium. So you've dipped your loop in acid, you dip it into uh, the lithium and then you put it into the blue flame on the Bunsen burner. And you will notice that lithium burns red okay lithium is red um, sodium I always think about sodium street lights because most not so much now because we're having LED lights but street lights used to be an orange colour so I always think sodium street lights because sodium produces an orange flame and I always think about potassium purple so potassium uh, PP potassium when you uh, burn that it produces a purple flame Okay, so make sure you know that procedure uh, because that may be something you're asked about as well.